Hello and welcome to another video on integration by Rygate Maths. This video is looking at the topic of trigonometric integration. Something that's really important to think about with regards to integration and differentiation is the way they link together, particularly when you get onto these much more complex integrations and differentiations. And it boils down to something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now this has been sort of steadily theorized over hundreds of, or a, a series of, sort of decades. Um, initially um, produced or defined geometrically, but then more algebraically and a little bit more abstractly by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz in the late late 17th century, early 18th century. The, there's a lot more complexity to it than what I'm going to say, but effectively what it says is that if we can call sum f of x, which is the integral of that, then the derivative of f of x is little f of x. That's, that's the basics of the fundamental theorem of calculus. It is a lot more in-depth and complex than that, but that's kind of the idea. In sort of layperson terms, all we can say is integration is the reverse of differentiation. Okay, and that's the idea, which is why in kind of the first year content, if we differentiate x to the n, we get nx to the n minus 1. And then if we integrate nx to the n minus 1, we get x to the n. Yes, there's a plus c. That's kind of not the idea that's relevant here. Okay, so that if you integrate a derivative, you get back to where you started. That's the idea of the fund fundamental theorem of calculus. And paying attention to that really helps throughout these next few videos for this higher level of integration for the second year content. So thinking about the sine and the cos differentiation, we can do that in reverse. If we integrate sine x, so we've got to think, well, what did we differentiate to get sine x? Well, cos x differentiates to minus sine x. So therefore, minus cos x will differentiate to sine. Likewise, what differentiates the cos? Well, sine. These you need to learn. Okay, so these two you need to learn. The one that we're going to use in this video often that you don't need to learn, it's in the formula book, is this one, the integral of sec squared dx. Now this seems very, very random to just pick this one, but the reason it's there is because it integrates to tan x. Okay, This is in the formula book. In a, in a way. It's not directly like this. It's in a form that I'll get to in a moment. Now we need to consider what happens if we start putting numbers inside our trig function. So let, let's have a think about sine 3x, for instance. What does this integrate to? Well, 
we need to think, okay, what would differentiate to give us this kind of thing? So let's start by thinking about, well, we know that sine will integrate to minus cos. So let's start thinking about that. And then let's start thinking about, well, when we do differentiation, what happens to this? Well, this doesn't change. So let's start thinking about it like this. Okay. Well, if we have y equals cos of 3x, what's that going to differentiate to? Well, cos minus cos differentiates to sine. The 3x stays there, and we, we multiply by the 3 on the front. So what this is saying is now if we integrate 3 sine 3x, we get minus cos 3x plus c, but we'll get back to that. So if we integrate sine 3x, that's going to go to minus a third cos 3x plus c. This way of thinking about it will be very, very useful later on. But for trigon trigonometry, on the whole, you can generally just remember the rules. So hopefully you can see a pattern. When we differentiate, we multiply by the thing on the front. When we integrate, we divide on the front. So what this means is, in general, the integral of sine kx with respect to x is minus 1 over k cos kx plus c. The integral of cos kx is 1 over k sine kx plus c. And again, like before, these two you need to learn. So in reality, if you just learn these two, you're fine, because in the other example, k was 1. The last one, sec squared kx, 1 over k, tan kx plus c. That's what's in the formula book, this one. If you can just learn and apply these three rules, you can integrate the majority of basic trigonometry. And in reality, a lot of the more complex trigonometry that we'll get onto much, much later is reducing the problem you've got to this type of thing, to one of these three rules, or rule, other rules that you can just look up in the formula book. Now, there's one big point that we haven't made that you need to be aware of, and it's the same as when we were doing differentiation. Whenever you integrate, with trig, you must be working in radians. Which means that if you're doing definite integration, something like the integral between 0 and 2, for instance, of sine x, when you're working this out, you must work in radians, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. So that's something you need to be aware of. So what we'll do now is we'll I'll give you a few examples. Like in the previous like in previous videos, uh, I'll give you the answers, then I'll go through them afterwards. So you can check, and if you're happy with what you've done, you can just go away and practice. So these are the five examples that I want you to have a go at. So go away, practice them, come back, and I'll pop up my answers so you can check. So here are the five answers. Check yours and if you're happy then you don't need to watch the rest of the video, you can go away and practice. If you're stuck on any of them then I'm going to go through each of them in turn. So 6 sine x with respect to x. So the thing with when we're integrating, we've got numbers on the front of our integral, what we can do is we can move them outside. Now this is 
you've got to be careful with this. It's much like factorizing. If you've got multiple terms, they all have to have a factor of 6 to take a 6 out. But if they do, that's all good. You can do that. From here, sine x integrates, as we've seen, to minus cos x. So this just becomes minus 6 cos x plus c. So don't forget your plus c's. This next one works in exactly the same way. A half cos x. Cos x integrates to sine x. And we've got our plus c on there. Part c looks weird because it's got the sec squared, but don't forget that's in the formula book. Other than that, again, it works the same way. This part D works exactly the same as the example we looked at before, except that it's 2 instead of 3. Now for this, you don't need to show all the working that I did for that previous example. All you need to think about is, and the way I kind of process this is, think about it in this way. So sine integrates to minus cos. The 2x always stays there. I then divide by whatever this number is, and plus c on the end. All I then do is tidy it up, and there's my answer. This last one, this plot part e, is a little bit weirder, so let's take this in a couple of steps. So let's stick, like we did before, the minus 3 on the front, So we've got the cos half x. So cos a half x integrates to sine. So cos integrates to sine. The half x stays there. And then we divide by this number. Dividing by a half is the same as timesing by 2. We get our plus c on the end. Which then multiplying out the brackets to make it look nicer gets us there. So you can see once you learn and perfect these rules these questions become a lot quicker. It's just a case of learning, practicing and applying them. There are a few extra um, standard results that involve trig that are in the formula book but not where you'd think. So they're relevant for the exercise that you may want to do. The first one is cosec x cot x. So the standard result is that this integrates to cosec x. Now the thing here is that this, as it stands like that, is not in the formula book. Where it is in the formula book is actually under the differentiation section. So what the formula book tells us is that if we differentiate cosec x, we get cosec x cot x. So you need, this is what I was saying before, earlier in the video, about the idea of differentiation and integrating, integration working backwards. What you're told in the differentiation section of the formula book is this is true. So we can differentiate to get from cosec x to cosec cot, and we integrate... to go backwards. The other standard results are very, very similar and they work in the same way. So we integrate cosec squared x 
which gives us minus cot x. And we integrate sec x tan x to get sec. Oh, that should be minus. Okay, so these three you can find in the formula book, just not in the integration section. They're in the differentiation section like they are here. So that's something you need to bear in mind for certain, for the exercises in certain textbooks. Thank you for watching.